What do you get when you combine the red color of a soldier's uniform with popular ingredients that are native to your homeland? Well, you get the Garibaldi, one of the coolest low ABV cocktails to come out of history in forever, and one that I think is getting a lot of attention. So today, we are going to make a Garibaldi on Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, ho there. My name is Michael. I am a bartender from the Kalamazoo area, and today my lighting looked weird because the sun decided to go away, and I'm having to make my own. Sorry if it looks a little weird right now. Um, I don't like it either. Today we're going to be taking a look at an Italian classic cocktail called the Garibaldi, which has been getting a lot of attention, funnily enough, lately on the internet, and I'm not entirely certain why. It might be because it's a very good spring, like a brunch cocktail, you know, it's got flavors that are perfect for warm weather and a low ABV content, so it makes it a good day drink. But I mean, outside of that, it doesn't necessarily have a lot of street, you know, curb appeal, because not only is it the most complicated two ingredient drink to make, at least by one account, uh, it also features an ingredient that is kind of not two American palettes. So fascinates me that we all like it so much. So a Garibaldi is a two-part cocktail featuring orange juice and Campari, two very Italian ingredients, which is most likely where the cocktail comes from. Now, the problem is that the Garibaldi was invented at a time when record keeping for cocktails and mixology wasn't really a thing. And the most information that we know about it comes from the reopening of a bar in New York City. So it's kind of difficult to say who came up with it, where it came, it was come up with, Hell, the drink could be as old as the liqueur Campari, which has been around for forever. So rather than try to guesswork a bunch of information about how the cocktail was created, I'd rather talk about the unification of Italy and the general that the drink is named after. So in the days of the Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire, the entire state of Italy is a united front. It is one place ruled by one government that may or may not be representative, but at the very least, is one government. Following the fall of the Byzantine Empire, Italy becomes a disputed territory. Various parts of it are owned by Austria-Hungary and other uh, European nations as if they were a satellite state. Uh, and for a very, very long time, Italy does not exist as a single unit and does not have a representative government of their own. This sort of comes to a head in 1814-1815 during these meetings called the Congress of Vienna. Uh, following the downfall of everybody's yay high French general Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, a lot of European nations come together in these congresses to discuss peace plans. They want to avoid Europe falling into another major war or conflict of any kind, and in order to do so, they decide territories and ownership and they make everybody happy so that Nobody goes to war. Ironically, that starts a war. <laughs> Starting in the 1820s, 1830s, uh, Italian natives get pissed off by the fact that these Congresses of Vienna uh, don't give them any representation. Their government is still not central and is not representative of Italian interests and is often shelled out to other nations. Rebellions start to arise and people begin to fight against uh, sort of these satellite governments that other nations have placed upon them. Starting in 1848, there, and then we're stretching until 1871 about, uh, there is this event known as the Unification of Italy, wherein uh, various popular uh, generals and political figures come together to unite the Italian people under a single flag and a single representative democracy and bring about a nation that can exist on its own. This is like a super important part of why Italy exists the way it does now. And it's actually one of the most prideful things that Italian history holds. People really do think of this event as like essentially their Independence Day, kind of like how America thinks of like July 4th as our Independence Day. It's, the, it's very similar, at least kind of in that way. I hope I didn't just offend a bunch of Italian people. <laughs> now, technically speaking, the unification doesn't doesn't fully end until 1918 at the end of World War I, because some of Northern Italy is still owned by Austria-Hungary at that time, and that doesn't get fixed until after the war. But during this period of unification from 1848 to 1871, there comes about a general by the name of Giuseppe Garibaldi. Garibaldi leads a soldier, uh, an army rather, of men uh, called the Garibaldinis, and they are essential to the conflicts necessary to bring about a unified Italy. His role in the unification is so popular, so important to the cause, that without it, it seems many scholars think that the unification simply wouldn't have happened. As a result, when it's finally over with, 
Garibaldi is seen as a national hero and to this day is still revered as such. There is a beard styling named after him, there is a biscuit and a bread named after him, and there is a cocktail called the Garibaldi that is also named after him. Now, the Garibaldi is a combination of Campari, which is a bitter Italian orange liqueur, uh, and technically speaking, it does vary in alcohol contents some places, so maybe it's a liquor, but whatever. Combination of Campari and orange juice. And there is not really a great amount of history about when it gets created, who creates it, where you could find it, at least until, of all times, 2015. There's a bartender named Noreen Young who works at this bar in New York City called Dante. And when they reopened in 2015, they had the Garibaldi on their menu. Noreen Young, or somebody at least at the restaurant, did find the cocktail and decided to put it on the menu, and it made it a mainstay. It wasn't just a matter of the cocktail gets put on the menu, it was actually a matter of the cocktail is perfected and put on the menu. Technically speaking, a Garibaldi can just be a combination of orange juice and Campari over ice stirred together in the glass. But Noreen Young uses the technique of frothing the orange juice in order to create a fluffy texture that can, you know, fights the bitterness of Campari, which we'll talk about in a second here, uh, and sort of makes the drink more palatable. That effort, ultimately, is what makes the Garibaldi in the modern day so popular, and why we are going to make one right now. So the thing about a Garibaldini is that it is a two-ingredient cocktail. In theory, it is pretty simple, but in execution, it becomes difficult because, as we discussed, Noreen Young's preparation of the Garibaldini requires us to froth orange juice. Now, you can froth a lot of things. Typically, in cocktails, that means you're using heavy cream or egg white, and that produces a protein foam that gives the drink a creamy, silky texture. Most things, though, like juices, can still be frothed by introducing enough air for it to essentially increase in volume and provide a more light texture. There's a couple different ways that you can froth orange juice, uh, one of which is using a handheld milk frother, which is a pretty common and actually the technique, I think, that is used specifically at Dante. But you could, in theory, though, also use a blender or an immersion blender in a tall glass or, uh, hell, you could do what we're gonna do today and dry shake the cocktail first. We haven't done one in a while, so I'll explain. A dry shake is where you shake a cocktail without ice. The way I do it is including a cocktail uh, strainer spring from a Hawthorne strainer, uh, which gives the liquid inside an extra point of contact and helps you build up foam. The idea is that when you do that, you're emulsifying something like cream or egg white, and that helps build up a foam outside of the step of adding ice and chilling and diluting because that makes the process more difficult. The point is, you need to aerate the orange juice. That's what makes it work so well. And we're gonna do that by dry shaking. Enough said, let's make it. <laughs> so a Garibaldini requires four ounces of orange juice, uh, and you're gonna wanna freshly squeeze this because that's kind of the whole point. I'm gonna grab my cocktail shaker here, and we're gonna go for a full four ounces of orange juice, which is, based on the measurements from liquor.com, approximately the juice of one orange. Uh, clearly that isn't correct, so we're gonna go for two. <laughs> Not to self, buy one of those giant orange juicers you could just squeeze. This shit is annoying. Four ounces of freshly squeezed orange juice. To that, we are going to add our Campari. Now, technically speaking, a uh, Garibaldini is built in the glass by pre-whipping the orange juice, but because we're gonna shake ours with a spring to try and accomplish the same thing, I think it advisable to do our frothing with the liqueur so that the drink doesn't just become flat when we stir the two together. And additionally, we can skip the step of having to build it in the glass, because why would you bother if you could just do it in the shaker? To try and froth this, we're gonna dry shake, as I said, and we're gonna do that by introducing no ice, but adding a cocktail spring, uh, strainer spring more specifically, to give it a point of contact. Now, whenever you dry shake anything, especially anything that could be close to room temperature, you need to get a really, really good hold on your shaker. That's actually why I like cobbler shakers compared to Boston shakers. The size and shape of these means you can get your hands wrapped all the way around it so it won't explode on you. We are going to dry shake this with as firm a death grip as possible for anywhere from 30 to 90 seconds, just until you get it foamed up. Kinda up to you what that means.
Okay. I think I can call that good. <laughs> Difficult to see, but I can see a nice thick foam resting at the top of that from us having aerated the juice. That's what we want. And we can maintain that by continuing our firm shaking. Now, this time, with ice. I'm actually really tired, wow. Full eight and a half hours of work and then I come home to do this. This is supposed to be fun. <laughs> now we need to add ice to shake and uh, to shake so we can chill and dilute the drink. I'm gonna stick with my usual one cube large, one cube small. The small adds dilution, the large adds agitation. In theory, because we're trying to maintain so much air, we could shake with just one large cube and then go for longer than normal. But I like to keep things consistent for the sake of having reliable results. So we'll tap it up, tap it down, and we give it a good shake to chill, dilute, and then maintain some of that aeration. I'm gonna go for 15 to 20 seconds, but 12 to 15 is probably enough. Garibaldi is a long drink, meaning it's served in a Collins glass, but without any lengthener. Uh, in order to prep this, we just have to crack two cubes of ice directly into the glass. We give this one last shake to finish combining, and then strain to catch any pulp directly into the glass. To finish off this Italian classic, we're gonna grab an extra orange. We're gonna cut that into wedges, and for our garnish, Place a nice sizable one. With that orange wedge garnish, we have made, ladies and gentlemen, a Garibaldini. Excuse me, wait, Garibaldi, fuck. <laughs> so, with our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and give our Garibaldi a taste. If you can't tell, this kind of opaque color is definitely coming from a lot of agitation. Uh, there's a nice little bit of like a frothy head sitting at the very top of the drink around the ice. I am quite intrigued to see what all that work created. So, cheers. Wow. Wow, that, that is, wow. <laughs> That's great. The thing about Campari is that it is incredibly bitter. Distinctly, notably, prominently, proudly, defiantly bitter. And even here, it being the base spirit of the cocktail, is coming through very, very bitter, even against orange, which is objectively the sweetest of the citrus fruits, if you're not counting like tangerines or whatever. Because of that like strong bitterness, it's, it's a lot of what you're getting. You're really tasting mostly Campari, but there is this nice, light, pillowy, almost creamy, but borderline creamy texture to it that's come from all that agitation that is pulling away from some of that. It is, it is still notably Campari bitterness and it's definitely not for everyone. I took that sip, what, almost two minutes ago now? It's lingering hard on my tongue. It might as well be as bitter as when I sipped it. In fact, probably more so because some of the sweetness has gone away. But that sort of texture is, is really giving it this additional benefit of the doubt rather, you know, for lack of a better word, and making it a lot more approachable. It's really good. <laughs> it tastes kind of, um, it's interesting. The, the sort of aeration we've done to that orange juice makes it taste kind of, kind of like orange creamsicle. There's a certain kind of note coming from the combination of orange juice and Campari, I think, that is making it read kind of like ice cream, very, very briefly. And then it goes into you know the rich, deep, orange, dark, earthy, herbal bitterness of Campari. And that is awesome. It is a really fascinating experiential preparation for Campari. And I think, I think it really does work. Plus, it really does look super pretty. This color is so nice. Like really nice. It's really good and actually very, very easy to drink. Um, on top of the fact that, you know, not just on the fact that it, it, Campari is a liqueur, it is sweeter than a liquor. It, even though it is very bitter, it will have more sweetness to it. And it's very low proof. It's a 24% alcohol. So thinking about how much we've diluted this with ice and juice <laughs> and how little alcohol is in the spirit anyway, it's eminently drinkable. It's an adult juice box. And it works really, really well. Mm. 
That was delicious. That was really, really good. And I dunked that in like five minutes. It, it's a little dangerous actually, <laughs> because like there's, there's so little alcohol there. You could drink a bunch of these because you're not realizing how much you're drinking and it could sneak up on you. But that bitterness is really moderating and would pull most people back from, from the precipice of drunkenness. Um, although, in all fairness, there's not much alcohol in here, so if you know where your limit's at and you know what you're getting into, you'll probably be okay. That was super good, wow. Doreen Young, good job bringing this back to, you know, to the light of day, as it were. It's really good stuff, wow. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for watching. This video has probably been kind of weirdly front heavy. I'm probably gonna cut most of the bullshit I said at the end of the video out because I was just kind of rambling, but that's that, the Garibaldi. Uh, a cocktail so good, it's the first one that I have finished on camera, um, which is stunning to me. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button down below and subscribe to catch the next video. I make one of these videos every single Friday and then sometimes on Tuesdays, taking a little bit of a break from that, but hey, you never know. You can also follow me on my socials, which are appearing on the screen now. I have a Tumblr, Instagram, and now I have a Reddit, which you can follow me on. Uh, I'm gonna go back through all my old videos and add the link to that in their descriptions, but you can also find it down below, and my username's appearing on the screen now, or just faded away, depending on how long I've been talking. I don't know. Feel free to follow me there. I don't use the platforms super consistently. Um, Reddit might be the one that I lean to the most because as it turns out, the folks over in r slash Tiki are super nice and taught me some shit about this god awful bottle of Boom Boo I bought for a video that I'm gonna make later um, that I didn't know and it was quite fascinating. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, make a drink for yourself. The Garibaldi truthfully is a really, really well made classic style cocktail and I think you'd be wasting your time if you didn't give it at least a shot once. I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. Cheers and bye-bye.